Good morning, Mets fans, and welcome to a Thursday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and after a catastrophic loss, this team does what does what it's done all year all year long. It brushes off a gut punch to come back and win, and it takes a series from the Nationals, completes a four and two road trip, which certainly could have been better, but. Winning every series is what we signed up for from here on out. So far, so good. I'm going to talk about yesterday's game, the current MLB home run leader, and the upcoming series this weekend with the Phillies on today's show. Mickey Calloway took a ton of flack yesterday uh, in the morning and the night before, after the way that the Tuesday night game ended. Um... There, he got a lot of criticism for not being more fiery, you know, for not flipping a table and going batshit crazy um, on the reporters and yelling at the players and stuff. And, you know, there's a part of me that can, can agree with that mindset and that thought of, oh, you know, you really got to show a little bit more fire when your team gets beat like it, like it just did. And I, while I normally would agree with that, um, you got to look at the fact that Every time this has happened to the team this year, Mickey's kept this same even keel approach to, to, to managing this club. And what I think the end result has been is that, look, th- these guys are adults. They're, they're professional ball players. They know what just happened. They were on the field when it just happened. They don't need to get yelled at by their manager. Instead, the manager keeps the even keel, keeps the clubhouse as relaxed as possible and doesn't press and I I think it shows in the product that we see on the field you know Mets teams of the past that would have had a manager that flipped out flipped the table etc they would have they would have folded yesterday they wouldn't have competed yesterday and not only did the Mets compete yesterday but they won they took two out of three from the Nationals they completed a, se- a season series where they've taken 12, they took 12 out of, I think it was 12 out of 18 games, or 12 out of 19 games, I think they were 12 and 7 on the season against the Nats, and you know, at least one of those <laughs> was another win that they let get away, so it should have been 13 and 6, but that's, um, you know, th- there, you have to take that into consideration when you, you evaluate the total package that is Mickey Calloway manager of the Mets. And I, I am one of his biggest critics. I, I complain about his moves all the time. But I, I also have to give him credit, and I did last week. No matter what happens, good or bad, he always has the exact same tone of voice. He doesn't panic. He doesn't worry. He, he doesn't seem to be concerned about losing his job, which, you know, maybe is a little bit of a cause for concern that he's so lackadaisical with regards to his future career. But still, he just kind of has that level-headed... I'm not going to panic methodology, and it it seems to work because, like I said, yesterday the Mets came out to play. They scored seven runs off Anibal Sanchez, the starter for the Nets, who's coming off of two two or three really good starts, Um, and they, they, they did what they needed to do. And look, I talked about this too. This lineup is getting deeper and deeper with the return of Robinson Cano, who had a huge day yesterday, three for three day in his return from the disabled, from the injured list, sorry, Um, and and inserted right into an RBI situation, and he produces on day one, picking up where he left off before he went out. Now, I'm not going to get ahead of myself, because let's not forget how he started the season, okay? (laughs) But he had a great day yesterday. Pete Alonso had a terrific day yesterday, uh, breaking, I'm sorry, uh, taking over, the major league lead for the home run chase. He's got 45. At this moment, he is on pace to hit 52, which would tie Aaron Judge's rookie record for home runs in the major leagues. So he has the he owns the National League record. Um, he uh, is on his pace for on the pace rather to own the major league record, and I hope he breaks it. Um, Jeff McNeil had a nice day yesterday. Um, just up and down the lineup, which again is very balanced. Um, just good days abound. 
Um, Brandon Nimmo came in late, and of course he drew a walk like he always does. Uh, and it's it's good to have Nimmo back. It's good to have um, Cano back. Yesterday I read that Robert Gazelman is beginning a rehab stint or pushing himself to rehab to get back this season. And there's something to be said about these guys who are injured and who could write off the season. And look, Gazelman, very much like Cano, not having his best season. And he's still pushing to try to come back and help this team. That's got to say something for the mindset and the mentality that this team has. And the, the spirit inside that clubhouse that this is a winning bunch. And it, it's got to start with the manager. It, it really does. And, I mean, we criticize him all the time. But, you know, there's... <laughs> There's only so far you can look where you see this team bouncing back from giving up a six-run ninth-inning lead and the next day coming out like as though nothing happened the day before. Coming out and putting the hammer down on the Nationals and taking a series on the road. And that's got to say something. And let's talk a little bit more about the, the game yesterday. So um, Zach Wheeler starts for the Mets. He is struggling from day one, from, from pitch number one. Um battled through five innings, got himself a win, which is hilarious considering what happened the night before, uh, <laughs> and Jacob deGrom can't get a win to save his life no matter what happens. Uh, I don't remember the numbers, but there was a stat that I saw shared um, on Twitter on Tuesday night that said something like deGrom's last 94 starts or something. He's got an ERA of like 2.1, and he has 16 wins and 17 losses in that time span. And the only reason he has those 17 losses is because the team couldn't score more than one run for him. And the only reason he only has 16 wins is because the team blows every lead that they get for him, that he gets uh, for, for him. You know, the bullpen comes in and, and, and destroys any chance for Jake to get a win. So I thought that was funny that, that Wheeler got a win yesterday. Um, Wheeler did what he had to do to get through the, uh, the five innings that he did. And then it was time to bite our nails. It was bullpen time, and it was it was really a put up or shut up moment for the for the Mets bullpen. Um, as I'm not going to say it again, but the night before, not a great performance by the bullpen. So yesterday it was it was like, look, we got to roll with these guys. This is who we got. And the first guy coming out of the pen is Jerry's Familia. And what does Familia do? But he lets the Nationals right back into the game. It's unbelievable. I mean, it is unbelievable. Familia, very much like Edwin Diaz, has been had been on a roll. Uh, had a couple of really good outings consecutively. Looked like he had found something, or he he turned a uh, turned a corner, and not the case. Comes into that that game and lets the Nationals get right back into it. Seth Lugo, sorry, Luis Avilan has to bail Familia out of trouble, and he does what he couldn't do the night before. He gets a big strikeout, and good for Luis Avilan who. That blemish aside, and not even really a blemish because he made a good pitch to Juan Soto, as I said, but uh, Avilan has been really, really good in the second half in particular. Uh, then the funny part was, uh, this, it's the bottom of the seventh inning, and Seth Lugo comes out on the mound. And I did like a triple take, because I'm thinking like, wait a minute, it's the seventh. What, why is Lugo out here for the seventh? I tweeted as much. And I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? And I, it didn't occur to me that Justin Wilson was still available. But even still, Justin Wilson should have been in in the seventh inning. I'm thinking like, okay, this is the bottom part of the order, five, six, seven. Wouldn't we be better off ha saving Lugo, right, for the, the eighth and ninth inning? But then I started thinking more about it. And the, the whole saving Lugo thing is exactly what Mickey did the day before, right? He saved Lugo for, for yesterday, right? And how did that work out? Not so great. So I, I almost have to say, you know what? Good job, Mickey. Good job preserving the lead when you did. And going to Lugo in the seventh, running him back out there for the eighth. I actually would have run him back out there for the ninth too, but he didn't. It was Justin Wilson instead who came in to the game in the ninth inning and uh, shut the door on the Nats. And it was not easy. It was nerve-wracking. I thought for sure something bad was going to happen. But it didn't, and as I said, the Mets took the series. So uh, good work on that one. One other piece of business that's of note from yesterday, Wilson Ramos's hitting streak was ended. We can thank Howie Kendrick, that asshole, for making an unbelievable play up the middle to bust the streak and end the streak. And it will remain 
uh, a Moises Alou held record for the Mets for the foreseeable future. Uh, so, something is happening here with a U.S. mail truck. I'm not sure what it is, but I'll just wait patiently, I guess. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, oh, no, I'm gonna have to wait again. Anyhow, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the uh, the Wilson Ramos hitting streak is is over at 26 games, and that's a that's a bummer, you know. But um, kudos to him for taking the whole thing in stride, smiling. And I, I have to give Ramos a ton of credit. Um, he he picked up three of those hits in pinch hitting situations, so that's awesome for the Buffalo. Um, good for him, capping off a, a really good stretch, and hopefully he doesn't fall back now. Hopefully he stays as hot as he's been because he's been one of the Mets, one of the Mets' hottest hitters um, during this hitting streak, and it's the reason the hitting streak exists, frankly. So um, that was worth noting as well. Um, final piece of business is the Mets picking up a series on Friday night at home. That's tomorrow uh, with the Philadelphia Phillies, and this is a big series. Um, the Mets went into Philly last weekend and uh, took two out of three from the Phillies. This weekend, the Mets have to sweep. They, they have to sweep because they have to surpass the Phillies in the wild card standings. Um, two out of three would be good, but they really have to sweep if they want to make this, this Cinderella run continue. And so I'm looking for a Mets sweep this weekend. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, and we'll be watching, of course. Um, at least I will, because I will not give up on this season. No matter how many times Matty Halt wants to put the, the nail in the coffin, I, I'm not going to accept it. Um, Mickey said the other thing that I'm sticking with, too. Until we're mathematically eliminated, I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to worry about this being a must-win game or that being a must-win game or anything. And uh, While I don't agree with the sentiment that there aren't must-win games that aren't elimination games, I'm still going to watch every pitch, no matter what. So... Um, I will be back on Monday to recap the Phillies series, which, again, hoping is a sweep for the good guys, not, not for the Phillies. Uh, but until then, I thank you for watching. You can follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Met. And as always, let's go Mets. <laughs>